please welcome Jasdeep Lali. Good afternoon. Am I on? Can you hear me? Cool. Um, I feel like I have a bit of a confession, especially after that introduction. Um, the title of the talk is Next.js in Production. Um, so, apologies. Um, so, uh, yeah, a bit of context. Um, this was still very much in the early stages. The work that this relates to was still very much in the early stages um, when the talks were announced, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty punchy aim to get this in production in front of live users uh, in time for this conference. Um, unfortunately, we're not quite there. Um, but it, we will be pushing to production uh, in the near future. Um, and yeah, we've, we've still got like, a, a ton of stuff to say and opinions on Next, which is what I'm here to share with you. So my name's Jazz. I am a web UI engineer at Deliveroo. Um, for those who don't know, Deliveroo is a restaurant food delivery service. So you would uh, go on the website via an app, uh, pick a restaurant, order some food. Uh, we get that order to the restaurant, and then we uh, send a rider to pick it up and deliver it to you. So quite a simple kind of user proposition. Uh, really complicated set of problems behind the scenes. Um, and we use technology to, to make it all happen. So a bit of context then about that technology. Um, so most of the Deliveroo app is a Ruby on Rails monolith. Um, so this is effectively the code base that was created on day one. And it's grown with the company um, over the last four years. Um, Absolutely the right choice at the, uh, the start of a company. You want to move fast, you want to iterate. Uh, a monolith enables you to do that really well. Um, once you start to hit scale, perhaps a slightly different story, that poses some, some challenges and some problems that, that need to be addressed, which I'll get onto. The front end of Deliveroo it was Angular. It's now almost entirely uh, written in React. There's a few places where Angular remains, but that's all in the process of, of moving to React. Um, so we love React. Um, the kind of the principles that it's brought to uh, UI development, um, the kind of the engineering rigor, um, it's all great stuff. And it's, it's certainly the basis on which we're going to be building in the future. Um, yeah. And yeah, the growth I mentioned. Um, so uh, once you start operating at scale, there's a whole raft of problems that, that pr all of a sudden present themselves. Um, and to give you some context about that scale, um, I've got some numbers. Uh, so in 2016, we had a 650% increase in the number of orders. Um, so that puts a lot of strain on that monolith. It puts a lot of strain on the database. Um, poses some really uh, challenging problems. As well as that tech side, uh, you've also got the prospect of 300 more hires in engineering during the course of this year. So not only do you have to scale um, on, a, on machines, you also have to scale that code base for all of the people who are contributing um, so that they can remain productive and so that we can continue to move fast and, and iterate. So with that in mind, what we have, uh, one of the kind of initiatives that we're undertaking is to try to split that monolith up. So that will be into domain services, APIs, and the web client will be carved off as a standalone application. So that's what we're just exploring and starting doing now. And it's for that that we chose to roll with Next.js. So what is Next.js if you haven't encountered it? Um, it is self-described as a minimalist framework for server-rendered React apps. So framework can be a bit of a scary word. Um, that's a minimalist framework. That's quite interesting. I'll touch on that in a minute. And for server-rendered React apps. So if you care about server-side rendering, um, if that's something that you want to do, um, then this might well suit you. Um, if it's not a concern, then, then perhaps not. Um, that's the blog post that um, uh, kind of accompanied the uh, initial release of Next. Um, the quotes are lifted straight from there. I encourage you to go and have a read if you haven't. Uh, also lifted from their site is this uh, video. So I'm going to play it. Um, it's not 
particularly important that you follow every step. I'm not going to talk through it, but it just starts to give you uh, an idea of how you can get started with Next. So as you'll see, the, essentially all it boils down to is creating some files, writing some React, and off the back of that, you've got a browsable website. So here, there's an index.js file being created. It's going to be a simple uh, React component. And as soon as you save that, the, uh, the root path of your, of your website will resolve, and uh, you'll render what gets written there. Um, I won't let it play all the way through. It's just more of the same. Um, but it kind of gives you an impression uh, of, of how quickly you can get started and kind of one of the core principles um, about Next, which is um, some of the things that we're quite interested in and uh, have really kind of valued at Deliveroo. So for example, um, it has the idea of pages. So as you saw in the video, you create a, a file that resolves to a root. So by default, it has page-based routing. So it uses the file system essentially as your router. So here, if you have a contact file inside pages, that will resolve to the uh, slash contact path on your, on your host. Um, as well as that, I mean, you can customize your routing if you need to, um, uh, but that's the kind of primitive uh, starting point. As well as that, you get um, page-based bundles. So each of the files inside this pages directory that's not prefixed with an underscore will, will be compiled into a bundle. Um, so you get uh, effectively code splitting at that page level. Um, so that en enables you to keep your bundles relatively small, um, which is a good thing. As mentioned previously, you want uh, smaller bundles, means faster downloads, parse and eval times are lower. Um, so generally, it's a good practice. And this has it kind of baked into uh, how you use Next. Um, perhaps a knock-on effect of page-based bundles, you might ask, is that, well, OK, if you only download a bundle for that page, then every time you cross a page boundary, you're now blocked by getting the next bundle before you get to do anything. And that would be a very good question. Um, the folk at Next have thought about that, and they have a solution for that, um, which is pre-fetching. So, in this example, you're using the, uh, the link component from Next. Um, and there's an example header component. So there's links to different pages. Um, if you decorate that component with the prefetch prop, then Next will, ahead of time, fetch those resources using Service Worker. So by the time you come to make that page transition, the, the, the bundle's already there in, local uh, in your cache. Um, so it means faster, faster transitions. Um, and again, I think this kind of demonstrates the, the, that point about being a minimalist framework, which is this is exposing a, a really powerful concept um, and, and something that, that, as Yanni mentioned, we're all going to need to be thinking about as we build, uh, especially for mobile. Um, but it exposes that powerful concept through a very kind of simplistic API. Um, and, and that's really great. I love that. Um, and then the final feature uh, that uh, we'll talk about next is uh, around data loading. Um, so data loading has always been a little bit of a pain point, I suppose, with, um, with uh, React apps. So in this example here, what, what we've got is a, a new lifecycle method that next uh, introduces. Um, so this is get initial props. So this is a function that will run um, prior to Oh, this isn't the up-to-date slide. Right, so, OK. Um, that's not the latest slide. Uh, they should have been updated. But um, the, uh, so the point around this is uh, it's an async function. It, it runs on the server and the client. So it enables you to, um, it enables you to ensure your data is uh, loaded uh, before you start to render. So you can await on a particular network request resolving before you decide to uh, respond from the server. So it means you've got some meaningful data um, uh, straight away, and you don't have kind of data loading in after the fact and uh, things jumping around. Um, the, the, you, would also, you could also augment this with, uh, by using component did mount. Um, so you could fire off a number of network requests. 
you might await on one that you care about, um, and then whichever ones happen to have resolved by the time your important request has, has resolved will be there in, your, uh, uh, in the data as part of the initial props. Um, and then in component did mount, which only runs on the client, you can actually see well, which net network request didn't resolve, and I'll just go and fetch them again. So um, kind of less important data, um, you can kind of like, uh, you can manage in that way, um, which, is, which is really neat. We're, we're, we'll hope be leveraging that um, quite a bit. Um, so that's, that's some of the things we're doing with uh, Next at Deliveroo. So quick summary, why, why we chose it, why we like it. Um, it's, the, it's the same tech that we all know and love. So it's based on Redu uh, React. It uses uh, Webpack and Babel. Uh, you can use it with Redux uh, in the example um, previous. Um, and these things are configurable. I think you, you'll be able to... Um, uh, extend Webpack uh, configurations if you have specific use cases. Um, so again, it's, it's uh, kind of exposing all these things in a very kind of minimalist, straightforward way. It doesn't add too much kind of guff and ceremony around the edges, so um, that's really great. Um, the simple kind of enhancements that I mentioned, so these are kind of primitive building blocks of Next. You get code splitting, you get prefetching, server-side rendering is, it just happens. Um, that's fantastic. These are the things that we care about. These are the things that we, we were already talking about trying to introduce in, in, our, in our new web app. Um, and the fact that Next does it out of the box is, is fantastic. Um, and also the, the, the kind of the literature that they've been putting out around releases and kind of the philosophy uh, that underpins the work that they're doing, um, I strongly recommend you go and have a read. Um, it, it entirely aligns with some of the stuff that we've been talking about. Um, so performance, uh, kind of network resilience, uh, kind of user experience as kind of first-class citizen. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really great. So I mean, if this sounds like some of the stuff that you would care about, that, that, that you'd be interested in, then I recommend checking it out. And it certainly gets um, the seal of approval from Deliveroo. Um, and that's the meat of the talk. One final point. Um, I would probably be in a lot of trouble with my colleagues if I didn't do this. It may make your eyes roll, uh, and I'm sorry, but not really. Um, so we are hiring. We are growing, as mentioned. We've got 300-odd positions to fill in engineering over the course of 2017. Um, we, are, we have a booth outside. If anyone's interested, come and talk to us. There's a bunch of my colleagues uh, around. Um, we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, and that's that. Um, thank you very much. Cheers. Ooh. Okay, first question. Uh, you mentioned how much you love React. Will your mobile app dever no? Yes. <laughs> Will your mobile app development be using React Native? So our mobile apps are kind of fully native. We have uh, iOS, Android developers. Um, uh, so we don't use any React Native at the moment. Interestingly enough, the native developers themselves have been talking about React Native as a means to get, perhaps, get things um, kind of prototyped. Or uh, you know, the core experience is going to remain native, but the bits around the edges that we might want to be exploring or new features, um, they themselves are talking about React Native. And they also then get to leverage the kind of all of the knowledge that the web developers have. So that's, that's actually really interesting. That's just happened kind of organically. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Um, next question is, is it an alternative to React Router? Um, interesting. I suppose it's not an alternative, but the way it approaches routing is very much uh, kind of different and, and an alternative to React Router. So by default, it has, as I mentioned, um, file system-based routing. Um, you can customize that, and you can kind of extend. The fact that it is just React, I imagine you can just import React Router and um, start doing your own custom routing on the client. Um, so yeah, it, it's not necessarily an alternative to that in terms of like one-to-one. -one. Um, but yeah, it does. It, it does present some alternative ideas that, that may be interesting to some people. Um, so yeah, hopefully that kind of answers the question. Um, ooh. A 
okay, what is missing for production ready? Um, is this my boss's question, perhaps? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a plant. Um, okay, so what's missing? Um, in actual fact, the stuff that's missing is not the stuff around the web developments. Uh, so we, uh, we're carving this app out. It's going to have its own kind of developer experience. Uh, continuous integration, deployment pipeline, monitoring, alerting, and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, there's a whole lot to it. Um, the nice thing about Next is that it actually takes away a lot of the decisions that we, that we uh, need to make up front at the very beginning. Um, we just get to leverage its, uh, it, what it, the benefits that it provides, um, and there's no real kind of overhead there. So the stuff that we're focusing on um, and, and uh, that we're kind of working on at the moment is, is getting all that other stuff around having this kind of production grade app up and running and resilient. Um, and that takes me to about 15 minutes and you all look very hungry. I would know I work for delivery. <laughs> so uh, that's all, thanks very much. Cheers.